welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for IBM Pulse. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. It's our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Peter McCaffrey, Cube alumni, director of marketing <laughs> for IBM Pure Systems. Welcome back. Thanks, pleasure to be here. We chat with IOD. Uh, what's the news? Is there anything going on uh, here uh, with we, SoftLayer? <laughs> we've, got, we've got a little bit of news. We, we're taking our, um, our pattern technology, which was originally deployed on our Pure Systems family, and we're moving it to SoftLayer, giving clients the flexibility to deploy either on-premise or off-premise. I was kind of joking there, but, because really the SoftLayer is the story. Cloud equals growth is a big message we're hearing across the board. Real rubber hitting the road kind of like use cases. And when we talked uh, last, you mentioned the patterns. This came up at IOD when we last chatted a couple years ago. It was like, wow, this is pretty cool. You can actually patternize things and roll it out kind of as, as a prefabricated use case. Now that, that takes a whole nother dimension when you put scale on top of it. So, so how does, tell, explain to the soft layer pure integration. What does it mean? What are the benefits? What, what do we expect out of this integration? Well, you know, it starts with the pattern itself. So if you think of a pattern, it's, it's, you can think of it almost as a blueprint, blueprint for the application. So you're capturing that blueprint, you're capturing the figure, the configuration behind the application. And previously, you would deploy that on-premise using a pure application system. Now, what you're able to do is take that very same pattern and move it to uh, an infrastructure that happens to run on software. And so it opens up some really interesting use cases. You know, for example, you know, many clients today have 10, 15 application instances on premise. And, you know, they could have an application instance for dev test, uh, QA testing, their production environments, of course, DR. And some of them are probably lightly, lightly utilized. And so what you can now do is really optimize the environment. You could take some of those instances that are lightly utilized, put them out onto the public cloud offering, and just move the pattern back and forth. You write the pattern once, you deploy it where you need to. And so what a great way to capture and optimize existing applications, and that's just one use case. So Peter, talk a little bit about, so since we last talked at, at IOD, what's changed in the whole um, integrated, you guys call it expert integrated systems, others call it converged infrastructure. Sometimes at Wikibon we call it a single managed entity. What's going on in that whole business that seems to be getting traction? You guys have announced actually that um, you're, you're, you're selling your x86 server business, so, so that somewhat affects, I think, the expert integrated system, at least part of it. Uh, goes over. So give us an update on the business. Well, so let me start with the, the integrated systems marketplace itself. The market is measured by IDC is, is growing, you know, the, the last tracker that they did was in the third quarter of uh, last year, and the market was growing at uh, almost 70% year over year. IBM was growing within that market almost two and a half times that. And so we really established um, a great deal of momentum in that marketplace. And we continue to build on that momentum with the kinds of announcements that you hear, you're you hearing here at uh, Pulse. Now, you're right, uh, we did make a, IBM did make an announcement a little earlier that relative to our x86 business. If you look at Pure Systems and you break up the family, there's three offerings. There's our Pure Flex, our Pure Application System, and our Pure Data System. Our, our pure application system and our pure data system will be unaffected, unchanged as a result of this. Our, our pure flex, we have a couple of different models. Uh, we have an x86 based model, that would go to Lenovo if and when this, this acquisition right. closed. And we have a power based and what we call hybrid, which is the combination of power and x86. Those would continue as part of the IBM pure systems family. And so, what you see us doing is we're, we continue to be very in, invested in the integrated systems market. We're, we're continuing to focus what I call more of the higher value offerings around big data and cloud. And not only do we have a, a full roadmap on those offerings, but we're extending our capabilities to, to off-premise environments as well. So in the, in the work that we've done at Wikibon talking to practitioners, we found the greatest value is the, the, the more you can integrate up the stack, the more value customers seem to achieve. Now that's not necessarily across the board, but certainly within uh, uh, an, an application domain or a particular industry domain, we've seen that pretty strongly. I'm wondering, has, has your experiences 
borne that out? And what are you seeing in terms of the, the full stack integration versus just sort of the, the converged infrastructure at the infrastructure as a service layer, if you will? It, you know, it, it's interesting. It, it is almost mirroring the, the cloud market itself. You know, the cloud market, you know, very, you know, its origins were around infrastructure as a service and you continue to see movement up the stack, software as a service, uh, with the announcements here, a big focus around the developer and platform as a service. The same is kind of happening with the integrated systems market. There's a segment of that market that's very focused on integrated infrastructure, kind of an almost a next generation blade platform, but there's also um, a fast growing segment of the market that's really about optimizing for the specific workload. That workload might be an analytics based workload, which requires you know, a different level of integration and content. It might be an application platform, uh, again, which requires the right, uh, the right uh, development environment and the underlying automation that goes with it. So in many ways, the integrated systems market is mirroring what we see in the cloud market overall. Do you, do you see this market, you, know, you mentioned some of the IDC numbers, I mean, enormous growth, 70%, you guys growing in the triple digits. Uh, percentage. Um, do you see this as an evolution of the, the server business or is it more a, 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 a disruptive revolution to that business? Well, you, you could probably say a little bit of each. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly, it, if you look, uh, you had one client tell me once who was in the healthcare business and they said, you know, I'm in the healthcare business but I feel like I'm in the manufacturing business because I have to take all of this componentry and run it through an assembly line that is my IT organization, and it's, it's fraught with risk, and I, I just can't afford that model going forward. I need to be a lot more agile, you know, a lot quicker to market, so they see these systems as just a, a higher level building block. You know, it's a different level of value, it's a better starting point, and it allows them to get to the end game that much quicker. And, and that end game is what? Uh, Focusing more on adding value, are they shifting skill sets as they do that, sort of further up the application value well, layer? Well, that is, you know, that is one of the consequences. If you look at a traditional um, IT organization today, many of the, uh, the skills there are organized around the technology silos. You've got your server specialist, your middleware specialist. When you bring in something like an integrated system, because a lot of those technology elements are integrated together, it really frees your staff to be um, a little bit more general in terms of uh, the kinds of value that they can bring to the organization. They can, they can focus a little higher up the stack, trying to better serve the, um, the business as a whole and some of the things that the business is trying to accomplish as opposed to worrying constantly about you know, maintaining uh, that existing environment dealing with the integration, dealing with fixed packs and stuff Are you like finding that. customers are actually qualified to focus on higher levels in the stack? Or is there a lot of retraining going on? I mean, if somebody is, you know, expert at, you know, LUN management, for example, and now you come in with this integrated system and you say, okay, here's this block of infrastructure and maybe even, you know, some application intelligence as part of that. Um, a lot of what you used to do is, is, is done, not completely, there's still some project work up front, but gone going, we're going to eliminate a lot of that. Are customers in a, in a position to exploit that change? Well, they are. And, you know, you think about it, if somebody is an expert in lung management, they're probably pretty smart. Yeah, it's a lot easier <laughs> to, to, and so to, to really, focus on you value know, production. Really freeing them up from... <laughs> You know, maintaining that existing environment really is, it can be very creative um, and inspiring for some of these guys. You look at other marketplaces, they don't have that guy, you know, if you're looking at the, um, you know, some of the growth areas, they don't have those types of skills walking around. So we're seeing a lot of, for example, a lot of uh, momentum in some of the emerging marketplaces where those kinds of skills aren't available and it's a way to really get on top of a, a new generation infrastructure without necessarily... Born of the web apps, the DevOps crowd, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Okay, makes sense. So I want to ask about the developer equation, because obviously the focus here is developers. How do you guys onboard the new developers, as well as maintain the relationship with the guys who need to become new, or the older developers, whatever you want, however you want to, install-based developers, um, that will become cloud ops developers or DevOps developers? Because there's a lot, 
more workload management that needs to be handled. Meaning, it's not just clean sheet of paper or greenfield, like cloud build out, which is easy, right? It's not easy, it's DevOps, pretty, not as many moving parts. So talk about that. Obviously, patterns are one way to get blueprints, get some leverage. Um, but from a developers, how are you guys at IBM specifically going to nurture those developers and build the ecosystem? Well, we're really doing it by providing a continuum of capability. You have to have a way of bringing forward that existing application investment. There are trillions of dollars in existing applications <laughs> in, in, and the people that build and support those applications. So it's just a huge investment that you want to bring forward. And as you point out, at the same time, there's a whole new generation and set of applications that are being built, born on the cloud, that um, offer different types of tools. So, so part of what you're seeing here is, is with the patterns announcement, we're really providing that means to bring forward that existing workload. With, with the Blue Mix announcement, we're really providing that next generation development platform that allows for those born on the cloud applications. And what you'll see over time is the continuous, you'll see us continue to bring those worlds together and bring all the developers together. Okay, so what's your, what's your elevator pitch to the developer? You know, you come, come out of the event and you pop into the, the MGM elevator and the guy says, I want to be an de IBM developer, I don't know how to, what's in it for me? Tell the developer, what's the sound bite? He's got to get to the 20th floor, he's got an elevator pitch. What do you say to him? What's the bottom line for the developer? The biggest thing I think for the developers these days is because we're building this out on open technologies is the tools that you want, the types of services that are important to you, we're, we're, we're supporting them, and particularly those that are built on open platforms. Cloud Foundry was a big example of that. And so we have what you want, and we make it okay. you know, very consumable and easy to use. I'll pretend I'm a developer again. Okay, what's in it for me? How much cash do I make? <laughs> okay. Well, they say I buy the platform. Okay, I buy that open. That's music to my ears. That's the language of love in today's developer community. Uh, DevOps, check the box there. Good stuff. Okay, cash. I got to make some money. I want to stay in business. Well, they say that it's that <laughs> developer that's going to have that next billion dollar idea. So you know, at the end of uh, but but go to market is important. You guys have customers. You do. guys have an ecosystem. What are you guys doing for the developer to keep them in business? Essentially, just giving them what they need to be successful. Um, it's, whether it's the right tooling, it's access to the right environments, it's um, you know giving them an opportunity to get out and deploy quickly. It's all about speed, right? If, if you have to get out there first, and as a developer, giving them an environment that allows them to get that application out there fast can make the difference. Okay, so I want to ask you a personal question. On the keynote this morning, actually, it's an IBM that We've seen the hit for IBM in the past, but you know, with Pulse at IOD, it's still you know, suits business, but it's got a hipster vibe, right? It's almost like it's the new cloud. You got a band on stage. It's a pack. It was literally a packed house. Um, what's your take on what's different right now? Well, you know, the industry as a whole is going through such a transition right now. You can't, you can't walk anywhere, you know. I've been around the industry for a lot of years. I've seen a lot of different shifts. I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like this. There's so much energy and excitement in terms of really uh, extending the enterprise onto the cloud and really make it real at this point. You know, there's a sense that this is, wow, this is really happening. We're right in the middle of this transformation and it's exciting. What's next for Pure? Tell us what's coming around the corner. Well, you know, we'll continue to obviously build out and support our on-premise solutions, but you're going to see us more and more support that dynamic hybrid cloud environment. Uh, and I think that's something that can really help differentiate us from some of the competitors out there in the marketplace that may only have an on-premise capability. With IBM, you get that on-premise capability and that off-premise capability. And frankly, I think that makes, makes a big difference in the market today. Peter, always great to have you on theCUBE, appreciate it. Uh, Pleasure, I, I love this patterns thing. I always loved it when we first started talking about it. Patterns is essentially, basically, basically a blueprint for use cases. A lot of leverage, essentially it's a kind of a boilerplate, if you will, of code and other resources. Um, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and uh, tell us real quick, um, what your plans are next year, the director of marketing, what are the things you're going to nail down next year for your goals? Well, we continue to build momentum in this marketplace. We've got over 500 client references out there today. And so success breeds success. We'll continue to get the story out there. 
to our clients, and we you know, continue to grow this, this part of the market. Okay, so that, what's the bumper sticker that leaves Las Vegas on the car for Pure? <laughs> what's it saying? Uh, pure is it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here live in Las Vegas. Uh, a lot of new stuff happening, new capabilities. Cloud is the engine of growth. You're starting to see it integrate into the data center, Internet of Things, smarter planets, smarter computing. A um, lot of activity. Certainly the cloud is going to be hybrid. It will be developer-focused. We're here live with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.